Dr. Fizz here on Introduction to Groups. Very important in theoretical physics. Now a set can consist of any kind of elements. You might have, for example, a house, a marble, a penny, a person. But a group is a special kind of a set that has elements designated here by A, B, C, D where a binary operation is defined. The binary operation here is represented by a dot and that means that you can take two elements A and C for example and have A dot C and that gives you some result. That there is a multiplication defined of some kind. It doesn't have to be a multiplication, it could be addition, but sometimes we loosely say a multiplication. But it's basically a binary operation defined by the dot. And if A is an element of G then we write this down in the shorthand notation. Now let's look at the properties of the group. First is closure. For an A that's an element in G and B that's in the group G. A dot B must also be in the group G. That is closure. So when you take any two elements and perform the binary operation which can be addition, multiplication, or some other thing that you define, that whatever you get is also in the group. Next is association. That when you have three of the group elements, A, B, and C, and perform the binary operation twice, you can do the first two first, A dot B, and get that result, which is a member of the group, perhaps that's some H, and then H dot C to finish the calculation. Or you can do B dot C first and perhaps get some F and then do the A dot the F but the ultimate result will be the same in each case and it will be an element in the group because of closure. If we go to the next definition uh, property we have the identity element I is a member of the group such that A dot I is equal to A. You get the same element back. Inverse element is the fourth property. An inverse element, A with the superscript minus one, is an element of the group G such that when you take the binary operation of A with the inverse of A, you get the identity element. If the group has the property that you can perform the binary operation in e any order, then we say we have a com commutative group or an abelian group. Now, did we really know that I works on the left hand side? Well, most folks will take that for granted that when you say identity you mean it works on either side. Well, strictly speaking I didn't define it that way. I defined it as a right identity but would it work as a left identity also? I'm going to prove that to you now from the properties of the group that indeed that will be the case. Well, you know how you do these proofs. You basically start out with what you want to show and work backwards to get something that's true, and then you copy the steps backwards uh, and show everyone that you're a genius. So here, I want to show the identity on the left side, dot A is equal to A. So what do I do? Well, there's not much I can do. Uh, what can I do? I have an A inverse, and hit the A inverse on the right like this, and then the right hand side all right, becomes I and when I use association and do the second two first I get I and now I know this is true because the I now working on the right hand side with any element that's in the group and I know I is in the group this must be true. So now I can start with this statement that I operating on the right gives you back the same element which happens to be i and then copy the steps backwards and show that indeed i is also left identity. When you say identity by the way that means both right and left identity. And as a nice practice problem see if you can prove in a similar fashion that the inverse which I defined as technically a right inverse actually also works as a left inverse given the properties of the group.